I'm not a soul tie girly. I just can't connect these men to my soul. To my soul? Connecting him to my soul because he gave me some good dizzle. Nobody ever talks about a soul tie being with a man that didn't get no good dizzle. Clock it! Drop a hot 16, ain't shit sweet. Real bad bitch, they ain't fucking with me. It's a real nigga speaking. Stand to your feet. Hey honey, it's your girl Asia J and welcome back to Brown Honey TV. If it's your first time here, make sure you give me a little subscribe below. And if it's not your first time here, welcome back home, honey. Honey, let's have some girl talk while I get ready to go to the Rob 49 and Skill a Baby concert. You did talk about like my mind. <sighs> I'm sick of these niggas. Hide some help. Get rid of these niggas. When I say I've had it up to here, I'm broken down. I'm tired. I'm done. A couple days ago, as the first six months of the year was wrapping up, I was sitting there thinking, and I'm like, hmm. I was off the first three months of the year. I did a little something before my birthday. Yeah. Then I waited two months after I had surgery to get back out on these streets and start back talking to these men. Because I just knew going into surgery, these men would be a distraction. Plus, I don't want nobody around me like that, like knowing my business like that. Like, even now, I don't know when to tell men I had weight loss surgery. Like, you know, because it's not like I want to be like, yeah, um, boo, be with me now. I'm about to get skinnier. No. But it's also like, this is a huge part of my life right now. Um, I can't eat certain things. I'm not going to eat a certain amount. I don't really drink. It's so many things that comes with this. And it's like, how do I just introduce this all to somebody? So I was really taking my time, you know, like not doing a hokey pokey. And they told me that after weight loss surgery, your levito, libido? Your L would be up, and baby, when I say she's trying to element a beat, she's trying to run through the, like a Tomb Raider. I'm not trying to be a hot potato, but damn, it is just like, it's something in me. And then, once I started doing it, I wanted to do it again. And next thing you know, I looked up, and I found myself in an old cycle that I have not entertained in so long where I abandon my true needs and my true heart's desires and I continue to play into my flesh. Oh my flesh. She's weak. And it's been a few months of doing that and what has it gotten me? What has it gotten me? I'm nobody's girlfriend. I'm not near being anybody's wife, fiance, etc. I haven't gotten any trips. I haven't gotten anything except some nuts because one thing about me one thing about me i don't see how y'all just be laying down with anybody that ain't gonna you know pop goes a weasel make sure you get what you came for because what i look like just being a little pea pocket for a man something for him to mm -mm -mm -mm. no sir if it take me longer to get ready for the dizzle than to actually experience the dizzle you gotta gizzle you gotta go you gotta go. You are out of the repertoire. You are out of the running. You are disqualified. You didn't get enough votes. The board of governors has met and decided on you and you will no longer be in consideration for this race. And while I was having some good hokey pokey, your girl cannot even complain. It was empty. It was empty. And I'm not the kind of girl that, you know, confuses good SEX for anything but good SEX. Like, I'm not a soul tie girly. I just can't connect these men to my soul. To my soul, connecting him to my soul because he gave me some good dizzle. Nobody ever talks about a soul tie being with a man that didn't get no good dizzle. Clock it. What they say on the net? Clock it. I'm just saying nobody's ever talked about no soul tie with that man that gave a weak peen. They don't even count him. They forget that that man even exists. So what I look like tying a man to my soul, to my soul, just because we did some good hokey pokey. I'm going to pass. But. I understand the concept of energy transfer and latching onto things. I'm not denying that. I just can't give a man that much credit and connect him to my soul. I'm at a point where doing the hokey pokey just isn't enough for me. You know, like, I want to be loved. I want to be cared for. I want someone to ask me how my day was and remember what I said yesterday. I want to be thought of and I want to be considered and... I don't want to just keep scheduling Disney and 
you know, I'm not going to see you until the next time I see you. And while that works for some time when you're in that season where you're just a squirrel trying to get a nut, I'm so far beyond that. And I feel like life is only getting better. And I want to share it with somebody. It's not even about the fact that I'm getting older, which I am, because Big Mama is 28. 28 28 28 and listen they better get in with me before this body gets to where it's going because if you don't get me before the body gets going baby i don't know if i'm gonna put anything up in here i got i got falling a lot of love for me to go and sacrifice the body because once i get the skins and maybe some of the ass i don't know about going backwards i don't know about that but above all i don't think that life was meant for us to be by ourselves i feel like there truly is somebody for everybody but i just have not met my somebody and do i necessarily think that if i stop having sex that i will just automatically meet this man not necessarily but i feel like i would be lying if i said that my vision is a little cloudy laying down with these men that ultimately don't care about me. And I'm not saying I'm laying down with anybody that's treating me bad and just doing me grimy. Not that at all. But the real is the real. They don't really care. And to be quite frank, I feel like my time as being just a sexual object to men is over. I'm retiring. It's never been something that flattered me. I feel like I'm ducking Dizzle every single day, but I'm not ducking good men that actually have intentions for me. And I know this is not a reflection of me, but after some time, you just can't help but to ask like, damn, like, when is someone going to see my worth? When is someone going to see my value? When is a man going to meet me and say to himself, I want that girl. I don't want to do life without that girl. I have to get her and I have to keep her. When will that moment come? When will I be recognized for the woman that I am? And I know that recognition has to come from within. And that's just kind of the key thing here. I recognize all that I am so much to the point that I want somebody else to experience it. I want to share it with someone. I don't want to just keep it bottled up inside and let a love that's ready to be unleashed be bottled forever. And I think the more time that passes, the more I worry about potentially falling into a trap of being too eager or maybe not being able to believe that it is real when it does happen. I see a lot of young women my age and even some older and even some younger just being with a man just to have a man and I never want to get to that point but does a long period of singleness drive you to that I try not to judge those women because we've all been there we've all been in a space where we were doing something that we had no business doing with the guy we had no business with but it fulfilled something that we temporarily needed fulfilled but that's just all it is it's temporary i'm ready for a sustainable connection a connection that has the intentions for the long haul and not something that is only gonna last for now the older i get sometimes i wonder what life would be like if i was a virgin what life would be like without the temptation of physical lust creeping in i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you honey it's not just the men that are the problem i'm a part of the problem too because don't get me wrong i'm a squirrel that likes to run up a tree and get a big nut so with that in mind i've definitely found myself in a few situations where he was cool the vibe was cool and i did what i felt like cool me wanted to do and ultimately he really wasn't that cool i got a comment on my instagram post talking about how i'm fasting from men and the guy said red flag i met this girl i took her on a date and she slept with me the first night and it's like oh i really wanted to date you and it just kind of reminded me of how 
the moral code and the moral compass of a man and of a woman is two totally different codes and compasses. It seems as if men only enjoy SEX with a woman when he feels like he's conquering her, when he feels like he is convoluting and conniving her out of it versus it being a choice or something that he earned in her eyes. It's not something that's a result of her comfort and her desire, but a result of his finesse. And as much as I've done to own my own sexual liberation, sleeping with men only I wanted to sleep with, communicating my needs, ensuring that they would be met, not just sleeping with that boy because he's fine. At the end of the day, these men still hold all of the power. And I feel like the last couple months being back out in the game, I've started to lose my. I started to lose focus on how valuable my temple is and was during these times when I was giving myself to people that necessarily didn't deserve me, that weren't necessarily honoring me. And I can't help but to think like, where did I learn that? My mama did not teach me that. She didn't teach me that you lay down with a man just because he likes you. You lay down with a man just he's, because he's cute. I remember when I was younger and y'all, I know it ain't right now that I'm a grown adult, 28 year old woman, but I lost my virginity at 16. And then I slept with that same person for about a year. And then when I turned 17, I decided to start sleeping with other people. And honey, you know, coming right up off that virginity, you like a little wabbit and you want to do it all the time. So I found myself like many other plus size girls, talking to the older guys because guys my age couldn't appreciate a woman like me even though i was barely a woman and i always only messed with the military men of fort bragg because at least if god forbid i was to get pregnant they would be able to take care of the kid now pregnancy is so far away from my thoughts and my vision i have like no closeness to even finding a potential father for my children so i'm nowhere near that but i saw that to say when did i start to believe it was okay to just lay down to lay it out and i'm not saying that women don't have that right to do what they want to do to get what they deserve sexually i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying that i found myself not abiding by any rules any rules personally or any rules socially i just was doing things and it was because i wanted to do them but i couldn't give you an honest answer as to why so I asked y'all, I made a video on TikTok and I said, if you're a single woman and you've been hunching the last six months, what has your hunching got you? Answer quickly. And some ladies said a car, some people said a this and a that. Well, mine ain't got me nothing, so it just don't make no sense for me to be doing it anymore. I plan on staying off of men for the remainder of this year at least six months the longest i've been without doing the hoku poku was almost two years and it came off of a situation where i just realized that men were absolutely horrible people and i might as well just get you into the story i was talking to this guy who i thought really really liked me and these were in my college days so you know everybody's trying to find their Aggie husband, their college love, and I was not above that at all. So I wind up talking to this guy that was in one of my management classes. So ooh, a business student. He was super cute. He was a short thing, muscles, always was so sweet to me. Never would have thought he would have hurt a fly until, until this man got over my house got me down to my britches, told me that he smelled something, <laughs> told me that he smelled something, just for me to go into the restroom and check myself, offer me to come back into my bedroom and there be no problem. And the next day I realized that this bastard stole $9 from my bedroom drawer. Old Asia wasn't as refined as this new Asia you see today. Old Asia decided that her $9 
was so important to her that she looked him up on Facebook. And you know who was also on that Facebook? His mama messaged his mama on Facebook and told her that her son was a thief. And you know what was so ironic about messaging the mama? She was also a big girl. So how are you gonna steal from your mama? <laughs> Ultimately, his mom wanted to cash up me, I think about 20 to $30. And he messaged me like, you messaged my mom, you big bitch, da 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 da. I was all types of big bitches. Meanwhile, his mama was also a big bitch. Nonetheless, that was a traumatizing experience. And not just because he stole the money, but the extent he went to to steal said money. And it might you, it was only $9. And it wasn't like he saw me put it in there. So he was just looking to steal from a fellow college student. But to tell me that something was not right down there with Big Mama. Because you know I'm going to go get in the bathroom and handle that. Just so you could steal. Baby, that traumatized me so bad. I ain't touched nobody for a whole year and a half. And honestly, the only thing that broke me from that year and a half of staying away from men sexually was I saw a man that had graduated and he had came back into town and honey I came with him you ever hear that saying you want a man to do right by you treat him like shit yeah I'm starting to really believe in that I recently just was over here being in dummy land playing house with a man playing Hilton Hotel this man is just cashing in all types of rewards points in this motherfucker in the restaurant Okay, in the maid service, in all of the above, like he's at the fucking hospitality suite. I apologize. Um, I had to skip ahead because I just got a phone call that I really have been waiting for. Um, God is good. God is so good. Can I be honest? I don't like bargaining with God. I don't like telling God, well, God, if you give me this, I'll do this. I really want things to naturally be a desire of my heart. Just like I know for some people, they go on this hiatus from sexual activity. And because they're disciplined, because they're focused, they wind up meeting the love of their life. And I'm not saying that won't happen for me, but I'm also saying that I'm not doing this in hopes that it will. But I can definitely say that the path that God has been putting me on has been calling me closer to him and further away from my flesh and further away from my fears. If I had the time to really tell you how much I've let pass me by because of not my doubt in God having me and that he will provide, but in my doubt in my ability that I'm worthy to receive these things. And I can't help but to sit back and think about those original feelings of unworthiness and where did they come from and why they remain so strong today. And honestly, they are associated with sex. And I feel like because I have been in a space where I've been giving a lot and receiving so little that it's made me almost question my own worth, my own worthiness to receive love, to receive true care. And I feel like ultimately what I just received, the confirmation that I just received is just reminding me that I'm on the right path and I do deserve good things no matter what I've experienced or no matter what I've done. I'm still worthy to receive good things. I'm still worthy to receive love. I'm still worthy of protection. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that after many and many years and days and moments of knowing better but not doing better. And while I know we have God's grace do I really want to keep abusing it and misusing it and taking advantage of it and treating it as if it's a never ending fountain? How much knowing better but not doing better am I going to be able to get away with before I have to face the repercussions of my actions? And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to scare you into practicing abstinence for the next six months with me. I'm just reflecting on conversations that I've been having with myself, with God aloud, and amongst others to really analyze what the fuck am I doing and what am I doing next. 
I think sometimes we'll be in the same cycles doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results and ultimately we'll do it until we go insane. Everyone always asks me how was I able to start losing weight and what made me really get serious and I feel like it's the same thing with this lack of discipline. After some time when you see the impacts of the lack of discipline have on your life it'll make you either want to toughen up or shut it up because you can't complain when you're not being an active participant into your rising but only contributing to your downfall and for me right now laying down doing the hokey pokey with men that don't care about me is me going down and not up ultimately i want you to do what's best for you whether that's keep being a squirrel chasing a nut or it's locking that coochie up whatever you feel like is the best thing to do to take action on in your life to get you to where you actually want to be i encourage that if right now you having a good time getting your socks off baby get them off of me because for the next six months big mama's going to be locking it down and going to be building herself up i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to finish my lip probably put on my signature gloss and find an outfit and hit the concert until next time honey bye look me in my eyes when you speak to me real boss bitch got my own shit love a nigga dick but that's about it brown skin honey reppin murder me fam on my back i ain't losing for shit first not the last to be this slick fuck the moolah if it can't be split next up get used to it when you hear brown honey you know it's me